Okay, uh, we're recording live here on Coffee with Vic. Uh, I just posted on Twitter an invite for anyone who is a Trump uh, supporter to come on with me. And I, I am not trying to be judgmental here, but I truly, truly would love to understand why um, <clears throat> Someone having seen everything he did this week, having looked at all he's done, uh, you know, the lies he's told, those kinds of things, uh, the immor immorality. So if you happen to be a Christian and one of those supporters, too, we can talk about that side of it also. Um, and, and everything that he has done, what is it? that helps you want to see past all of that and support this guy's decision and consider him continuing this. Uh, it, it just, I, I, I'm just kind of amazed. You know, I, I used to be a Republican, and basically, frankly, I've given that up. Uh, I'm not a Democrat. Uh, although some of the things they're offering are awful appealing to me because, you know, I'm a senior citizen. I have kids who are going to school. Uh, they have debt, you know, from school debt. Uh, so there's, there are some things about that side of the program that I think are, pro and I have grandchildren who are coming up. Uh, there's a lot about that side of the program I find appealing, but but there's some of it I don't. Some some of the more conservative stuff, I do. For example, the the whole idea that uh, without knowing everything about the pipeline to Germany and Russia, you know, uh, to to criticize Russia and then, you know, build their commerce at the same time uh, like Angela Merkel is doing. You know, I, I do have some problems with that, but I, I really don't understand everything about how that is impacting the EU. Um, I'd have to also take a look, you know, are we trading with Russia? <laughs> so maybe it's not oil and maybe it's not a gas line. Uh, but it might be weed, it might be food, it might be other things that we continue to provide them. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not totally up on all the sanctions we have on them and whether or not they are impacting Russia and whether uh, we're reinforcing them all that much. So, uh, you know, I'm kind of one of those uninformed citizens, but I, I can definitely see from videos and from tweets and from information things that would really truly bother me both as a Christian and as a voter. So I threw that out there. So if you happen to be out there and you're and you sign on to that uh, link, I, I would most definitely be interested in um, uh, your explanation, just come on the air here with me and just uh, help us understand. that. That's what I think we need to do. I, I think we really need to be able to talk through these issues. Uh, there's no question in my mind there's common ground on, between everybody. I mean, uh, uh, you know, if if you talk about freedom, Democrats, independents, and Republicans love freedom. They love the ability to choose a religion they want to go after. They are, choo you know, to pursue. They want to, you know, the right to decide who to put in the office. They want a right uh, to carry firearms. I mean, there, there's a lot of things that people want. Uh, some of them, you know, well, if it's not firearms, we we at least agree on the right to be able to defend ourselves uh, against someone uh, without being hauled in, like maybe it's happening in Honduras now. If you if you defend yourself against the government there, you could be shot on the spot in the streets by the military. So, you know, we we all agree those things are pretty good. We really do. Uh, but, you know, there are points.
points. There, there are lines that have to be drawn. There are rules and uh, otherwise and laws, and there are uh, values and things that uh, drive us all. And if we don't have those things, then we have chaos. We have. Um, uh, I'm not even sure we had the Wild West because at least they had some semblance of order or some semblance of uh, of uh, rules and ethics that go along with uh, being in the Wild West back then. But uh, yeah, yeah, if you're out there, please come talk to me right now. I really want just anyone who can uh either discuss it with me or if you you know if you can kind of just uh, you know i don't care if you're republican or democrat uh, or independent or nothing like i am right now you know um but the pro the problem with our voting is we can't go in and vote uh, we, we have been divided by parties for so long with so much, with so much emphasis on two parties, uh, that we can't get away from that. We can't vote against both parties <laughs> and have any opportunity to win. So people then are forced to go one way or the other. And I think there's some people who voted for Trump out there and say they still support Trump out there who who would support him if there was an option other than the strong left democratic side of things? So I don't know. Uh, it, it is a tough situation we're in in America, and we have, we have to begin uh, to draw some clear guidelines. Uh, I always, you know, I am a Christian, and I, I always go back to the fruit of the Spirit, how you should treat people. You know, you treat them with respect, love, caring, concern, patience, compassion, those kind of things, uh, um, as opposed to the other side, and that is just to win at all costs or create dissent and division and and then play that against each other uh, I, you know i can't see that as a very viable solution to the problem and i know you know putting this out here that fast um i'll sneak back over here hold on uh go back over here and uh check twitter one second and um And uh, what I'm doing here is telling people on Twitter, I'm just reemphasizing and sending a URL link uh, to help them uh, find me. Uh, and man, I just, uh, I don't think I have seen anything like this in America in my life, um, dating back to being a teenager and uh, you know, I live, I'm older, so I lived through the civil rights movement. I lived through a lot, a lot of things. I lived through the <clears throat> Cuban, Cuban crisis. Let me get some coffee here to help my throat a little bit. Nah, that's coffee with big. There you go. But uh, I, I think there, I, I'm really suspecting. There are a whole lot of people out there who truly feel kind of like uh, their their option. They don't have any options. That they chose an option. Uh, what they're hearing is hate and discontent and discord from the Democratic side, um, which is really doing no good either in the long run. Uh, you know, people ought to be comfortable about. Uh, what's going to happen to them in the United States of America, uh, whether you're white, whether you're black, whether you're Muslim, whether you're Christian, whether you're Jewish, whether you're Hindu, Chinese, Buddhist, uh, you know, name it. It doesn't make any difference. Everybody, and, and also 
aliens who are coming across the border who provide a tremendous amount. I know, and you know, I lived in Oklahoma for a lot of years, and I'm telling you, I know a lot of illegal aliens that were doing lawn work that the people could not get anybody else to do at a reasonable rate. Uh, uh, you know, uh, who were not illegal. Now, uh, by reasonable rate, I mean, uh, if you were trying, you know, I, I had people who ran a lawn service there and I knew them and, and, and they built a business around that lawn service. But, uh, you know, unless you're somebody who's going to do a lawn in those that kind of a situation where you're going to build a business, buy trucks, buy lawnmowers, hire people, those kinds of things. And, and even then, by the way, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure there are people who uh, I'm not sure were uh, uh, legal or not. So I couldn't say for sure one way or the other, but you can suspect there are probably people who have lawn services to hire some of these people. Um, pay them outright cash. <laughs> so, but they're providing a service that nobody else seems to want to do uh, where an average person could afford to pay them. Um, yeah, I mean, you can have somebody come by and mow your lawn for 50 bucks. You know, when I was 14 years old, I was mowing lawns for a buck. Okay, a whole lawn for a buck. That's trimming, mowing, bagging, the whole thing uh, for a buck. Okay, and that's how teenagers earn their money to go to movies or, you know, buy their, go to McDonald's or steak and ale or whatever it was. Uh, you know, today people want 50 bucks to mow your yard. That same yard, same space, same grass grows about the same. 50 bucks. Or that that is a five thousand, or or maybe I you know I'm just guessing. I, I'm thinking that's about right, five thousand percent increase. But who knows? Uh, maybe five hundred thousand percent increase. Uh, I'm not good at maths, but I will tell you this. I will tell you this. Um, it's a lot more. So so you know there are all kinds of people like that in this world. And all of them have differing issues that they need to be confronted with. Some of them have to do with health care and, and not earning enough to afford health care. Others are concerned about being able to afford college. You know, I, I can remember going to school back in the 70s, and tuition was like, I don't know, I might have paid $200 for the whole semester. And now it's $2,500 the semester just for the tuition. What is so different about what we're teaching kids today than then that warrants that kind of increase? I mean, the buildings are the same, the heating's the same, the electrical's the same, uh, and the University of Florida buildings that when I went there. <laughs> so, you know, I, I don't know, unless the teachers are so much more brilliant than they were back then, and I'm thinking people are going to say that's not going to be the case. But uh, there, there are some things like that that we need to get folks sitting down and talking about, that we kind of all across the board, I don't care who you are, you agree on that. You agree on a decent living wage. You agree on not having to be priced out of the market in the world. Uh, if you're a senior citizen and you're on Social Security like me, uh, you know, you, you're, you're going net negative every year. Because I'm telling you, the percentage of increase they give you for cost of living index is nowhere near uh, the increased pricing on all the items a senior citizen buys. There's, it's just, it's just, uh, you're you're just net negative. So you have to give up something somewhere. You know, me, I I got rid of a car. I got rid of thousands of dollars a month. Uh, you know, or a couple, almost a couple thousand dollars a month between car payments, insurance, gasoline maintenance, all that kind of stuff that goes and you know, the depreciation of the car, etc. Yeah, start adding that all in. 
uh, you have to ask yourself, is there a better way? And, and there, <laughs> I looked at it, and guess what? There was. It was called Uber and Lyft and some of these rideshare services. Frankly, uh, there's a little bit in terms of risk and security in my mind, but, you know, not that much. Not that much to make that kind of difference. You get rid of all of that. Uh, you, so you give up some of that. And, you know, if I have, you know, if I want to take a week long vacation somewhere and drive, I simply rent a car and it's still cheaper in the long run. So there are ways to mediate that. But why should we have to? Why should we have to? What is Congress, the President of the United States Congress, the judicial system, what, what are in the heck are they doing to help that average person who isn't a millionaire, who doesn't earn $100,000 a year, which is a vast majority of Americans don't earn $100,000 a year. I'll tell you that right now. So every year, the amount of percentage of increase they get every year, and even a thousand or two dollars worth of bonus, you add that all in, take out taxes on all that stuff, and you, you, you know, that gets eroded by the increase in pricing we've seen over the years, which is a net increase. That, that increase hit your, hits your net income after taxes. It's not something that's compared against your wages. It should be compared against your net income tax. And most people don't have the tax dodges that corporations have to reduce that tax percentage down to five, six, seven percent versus, you know, the 30 percent they're being asked to pay or even 25 percent now. So think about this. Uh, you know, what is it that excites you about voting for these folks? I, frankly, I don't think any of them have a clue. I think they sit up there in their chairs and they don't live the life we live, except for this young lady, by the way, who was uh, uh, Ortiz, I believe her name is, or something like that in New York who got elected. Check out her history. She is an average person who felt the pain of not being able to survive without going out and working two jobs and trying to go to school and, you know, uh, taking whatever you had to take to survive. Okay. So think about that. What in the world makes us think any of those people, because they're lawyers or whatever, uh, successful doctors, successful, but none of these people live the average person's life. They have, they just don't live it. And if they did before they became that, they didn't afterwards. They don't understand it. They're going to go back to being a doctor. They're going to go back to being a lawyer. Uh, they probably had a chance to build a retirement. Uh, they have perks that go along with that congressional position they don't understand they don't understand I had to sell a car I had to get rid of a car to get rid of all those expenses so that I could have some money to do some things I need to do and stash away some money to take care of any kind of medical bills that might arise that aren't covered by insurance okay <laughs> they don't understand that they don't know that uh, and these are things that people talk about in coffee shops like Tim Hortons and McDonald's around the country, uh, but they never get solved because people feel like they're basically helpless when it comes to electing people. But you're not. Your vote counts. I think we have now discovered that more than ever before. And so if, if if you were one of those persons that voted for Donald Trump because you didn't think you had an option because you didn't like Hillary and I didn't either, either you did one or two things. You stayed home and you voted, you didn't vote. And consequently, low turnout then tends to go to those people who spend the most money on their campaign. So, or... You voted for Donald Trump because you thought Hillary was a crook 
And what Donald was offering was a change and a promise to change, but he never really was clear about what that change would be. If you look at everybody who's put in office and everybody who's left, if you look at everybody that's under indictment that was related to him, forget the fact that maybe he didn't collude. Manafort was associate of Trump's. Cohen was an associate of Trump's. These Russians dealt with him and his family outside, even, let's say outside of the election. These are the people, these are the people he associated with, okay? And they're being tried. And, 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 you know, I don't know. If we ever got into his money, we might find the same thing we found on Manafort. And I think that might be what's scaring Trump, okay? And, uh, you know, and by the way, I would say this. Anybody else that has that potential threat in their background probably ought to be scared too. So here's the deal. I guess I can't get anybody to come on with me, but I'll post this. And here's the deal. I'm going to come back on each day or so, except, you know, next week is busy week for me, but I'm, when I come back, I'm going to get back in, um, in between my next leadership program, which I have a program called the Leadership uh, Talk Show. And I encourage you to look at that. You can just uh, go on to uh, an, an Apple podcast or wherever you get your podcasts and type in Victor L. Vogel, V-O-G-E-L, Victor L. Vogel. And uh, you'll be on Apple for, for iTunes, for example, and I will pop up there and you have, you'll, you'll have two things. One has to do with personal protection and threats and those kinds of things that I do work in or have done work in the past and do some videos and some work and still do. But uh, there's another section in there called the Leadership Talk Show. You can go in there and watch uh, some of the stuff I spent 35 years developing leaders and you can watch some of that stuff. Uh, and then this is what I'm going to do in between those on a more frequent basis. I'm going to try to convince people to get on the air with me here just to dialogue, just to get an idea of uh, how you feel about what's going on. Are you really? I don't care if you're Republican, Democrat, Independent. Are you frustrated? <laughs> and if you are, what is frustrating you? And what do you think we can do about it? What do we really need to do about it? Okay. And how can we solve it uh, in reality? Or maybe we can't solve it. You know, people want to uh, solve the race relation program. I don't know if it can be solved. You know, I, I was back in the 60s when it evolved. Okay. I went through the whole thing. I don't see it much better now than I saw it back then. A little better. I mean, I, I see some people in positions that are stronger, and I see more, you know, we've had a black president, for example, but that didn't touch anything in the Hispanic community, the Muslim community, the Jewish, well, I don't know about the Jewish, but the, the uh, Chinese community. So, you know, that's the world we're living in. And if you're fearful that that's going to impact who you are, if you're a white person, then, you know, you need to kind of come out and say what it is you're fearing, because maybe it is a real fear, and maybe it's not. Uh, if it's just one of those core value things that you were raised with and you just can't get over it, then, you know, you're going to be a frustrated person over the next uh, 15, 20 years, I can tell you that, uh, because uh, it's changing. And there's not much you can do about the change. I don't care how, how active or how rebellious you want to be. Uh, you, you, you can't change birth patterns. <laughs> you know, you, it's just not something you can change out there. Uh, and, uh, and you, you know, you can't stop people coming into the country because it's just not going to happen. I mean, uh, you can build any wall you want. You can put a row of people in there and you can't stop it. Okay. So join me later. See you then.